They are the biggest of all cats. And one of the most distinctive. Lithe and powerful with bold black stripes, tigers are amongst the most charismatic and majestic animals on our planet. And they are also among the most endangered. Noble and fierce. Tigers have instilled awe into the hearts and minds of people throughout our history. Portrayed as the guardian of the forest and the king of the jungle, a symbol of courage and strength. But these same powerful traits have put wild tigers at risk from hunters and wildlife traders. And their forest homes are being destroyed. These amazing animals are dangerously close to vanishing forever. Tigers are beautifully adapted for survival in the wild. Their distinctive black stripes are fantastic camouflage, blending them in with the trees and tall grasses, where they stalk and sneak up on their prey. These stripes are as unique as human fingerprints. No two tigers are the same. Anyone who dared to shave this guy's tawny fur would find that the bold black stripes remain. Tigers can grow to more than three meters or 10 feet long from their nose to the tip of their tail. They can weigh over 600 pounds, that's 270 kilos, more than three times heavier than the average man. The tiger's big cat cousins include lions, jaguars, leopards, cheetahs, mountain lions, also known as pumas, and the mysterious snow leopard, which is the tiger's closest cat relative. Many of these big cat species are also endangered, some on the verge of extinction. All cats are descended from the same ancient feline ancestor, even the kitty that may be snoozing on your couch at home. And they still have much in common. Like house cats, tigers sleep most of the day. They love to stretch out in the sun. And they are meticulous groomers. Cubs are playful like kittens. It's practice for the hunt. But unlike most house cats, tigers love the water. And thanks to webbed feet, they are great swimmers. A pond or river makes a great place to lounge around and cool off. All wild tigers live in Asia, in thick forests or areas with tall grasses to hide in and with plenty of prey to eat. They are mostly solitary animals, but they are also good communicators. A tiger's roar can be heard up to three miles away. They mark their territory visually, leaving claw marks like these. By scratching and rubbing, they leave behind a unique scent it comes from scent glands in their paws and their tail and face, even their whiskers. A tigress can have as many as seven cubs. They are dependent on their mother for up to three years. The cubs stay close to their mother by following her smell, left behind with each step of her paws. These bright white spots behind both ears give the illusion of eyes on the back of the tiger's head. This may serve to scare off predators and also help cubs keep their mother in sight. Tigers rely on stealth rather than speed to ambush their prey. Hunting in the early morning dawn or at dusk. They eat many different kinds of animals, deer, monkeys, birds, reptiles and fish, even young elephants and rhinos. Tigers are very important in the rich web of life on this planet. A healthy tiger population usually means that everything is fine with the rest of the forest. Remove tigers and their whole ecosystem begins to unravel. Protecting tigers means protecting their habitat protecting their prey, protecting all the other things that these animals depend upon to survive and thrive. 
So protecting tigers in the wild protects many other species as well. Tigers once roamed across enormous stretches of Asia. In 1900, there were more than 100,000 wild tigers. But over the past century, the tiger population has plummeted, and the size of their habitat too. Now, just 3,000 tigers survive in a few small scattered areas. That's a 97% decline in just one century. There used to be eight different kinds of tigers, known as subspecies, but only five, and maybe just four, subspecies survive today. The most common are Bengal tigers on the Indian subcontinent. Some Bengal tigers are born with white fur instead of orange. These white tigers have been bred in captivity for zoos, circuses, and animal shows, but they are very rarely found in the wild. Amur tigers, also known as Siberian tigers, live in the snowy forests of the Russian Far East along the border with China. These are the largest tigers growing almost three meters or 12 feet long. Indo-Chinese tigers are found in Southeast Asia. Some scientists believe that these tigers are actually two subspecies, the ones in the north different from those in the south. Sumatran tigers are the smallest subspecies. They live on the island of Sumatra in Indonesia. It's not cold here, but some males sport a very prominent ruff of fur around their neck. Four kinds of tigers have disappeared in the past century alone due to hunting, habitat loss, and not enough prey to eat. Bali tigers went extinct in the 1940s. Then the Javan tiger and Caspian tigers disappeared in the 1970s. And now, the South China tiger is also thought to be extinct in the wild. Wild tigers are in trouble. They are losing their habitat, their home, as human populations grow. People are cutting down forests at a rapid pace, replacing them with houses, farms and roads. Forest destruction doesn't just affect the tigers. Deforestation also produces as much as 15% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. That's more than all the planes, trains and automobiles on Earth. So conserving forest habitat for tigers will ultimately help people, too. Unfortunately, for most of the world's tigers, habitat means a metal cage. <coughs> there are about 6,000 tigers in captivity just in the United States. This is twice the number of wild tigers in the whole world. Most of the captive tigers in the U.S. are victims of the trade in exotic pets. They live in cramped and miserable conditions along roadsides, in the backyards of breeders, in circus wagons, and in private homes. You want to pet him? Quick. Quickly. Come over here and hold the bottle, too. There you go. Another threat to wild tigers is the loss of prey animals, their food due to wildlife hunting in and around their habitat. Sometimes tigers have to stray out of the forest to find food. This often ends badly for people and tigers. Tigers are also illegally shot, trapped, and poisoned because some people will pay high prices for tiger bones, skins, meat, and other body parts. This illegal hunting is called poaching. It is one of the single greatest threats to wild tigers. For each wild tiger they kill, poachers can earn up to 50,000 US dollars on the black market. In a small, far-flung corner of the Russian Far East live the last few Amur, or Siberian tigers. Reserves have been established to protect these critically endangered tigers. But the wild Amur tiger remains so rare that most of the Russian rangers assigned to protect them have never seen one alive. The anti-poaching teams that I4 supports are small, but very resourceful. 
One group invented a motorized glider that takes rangers airborne, high above the trees, for a bird's eye view of the reserve and any trouble for tigers on the ground. Public education is very important here. Every year, thousands of local school children celebrate Tiger Day in Vladivostok, Russia, near the wild tiger reserves. The hope is that these children will grow up to protect wild tigers, not poach them. More wild tigers live in India than anywhere else in the world. They are Royal Bengal tigers. But here too, the number of wild tigers has decreased dramatically, from about 40,000 wild tigers in 1900 to less than 1,500 in India today. The Indian government has been working with conservation groups like IFA to give new hope for the tigers here. There are now 37 reserves in India where wild tiger habitat is protected. And where IFA trains and equips thousands of wildlife guards to defend the tigers from poachers, wildlife traders, and habitat loss. China is the birthplace of all tigers. The species first emerged here two to three million years ago. There were thousands of wild tigers living in China 50 years ago. Now there are few and possibly none left. But there are more than 6,000 captive tigers in China. Most of them live on huge tiger farms confined to row upon row of small cages. These farms are big business. The tigers put on shows for tourists and are bred for the trade in their parts. Tiger bones are soaked in wine, which is sold as a health tonic. According to Asian tradition, products made from tiger body parts have healing properties and can give people strength. But most people who practice traditional Chinese medicine today promote alternatives to using tiger parts. Yet the tiger farms continue to profit from breeding and killing them. This is not just cruel to the captive tigers, it's also a big threat to the Earth's last wild tigers. Because people who use tiger products prefer them to be made from wild tigers rather than farm tigers. So as tiger farmers encourage more people to buy and sell tiger parts, more wild tigers will also be illegally poached for the trade. And the number of wild tigers will dwindle even more. Tigers are in crisis. They have already disappeared from vast areas of their wild habitat. In just a century, this irreplaceable species, like so many others, has been driven to the brink of extinction. And humans are to blame. Conservation and animal welfare groups like IFA are campaigning fiercely to protect wild tigers in the few remaining places on Earth where they live. I4 Wildlife Rescue staff are breaking new ground for tigers and other wildcats, like these leopards. Young cubs, orphaned by hunters, are rescued and hand-reared until they can survive on their own. The goal is a second chance at life in the wild. We all need to work together to protect tiger habitat, to eliminate poaching, to stop the trade in tiger parts. If we all take a stand for wild tigers, these, these magnificent, magnificent animals, animals can, can be saved. saved.